Hey guys, this is Comic Uno, and today I'm doing Comic Uno's Best Comics of the Week, and this is the show where I review all the comics I read this week in one show. We go least favorite to best pick of the week and everything in between. And at the end of the video, we talk about the viewer's pick of the week, so in the comments below, let me know your pick of the week for a chance to be featured on the episode. But let's get started. I had about 10 books this week, so average size haul. And number 10 for me is Power Pack Into the Storm, issue 4. You know, this is a book that I'm, I'm reading because I have a Power Pack fan. I love Power Pack, but this is not the side of Power Pack I've, I've enjoyed. I honestly like the more modern stuff with them, but I, I enjoyed the 80s take, but I, I liked when they were siblings. I liked to see when they went to school or interacted with their parents, and I feel like Issue 1 did that, but now we're in the space opera, and, and that's not the most interesting aspect for me for these characters. And these nostalgia books are hard, you know, because you can't really let the characters grow, but you're, you're trying to connect to what we enjoyed about those books. So it's, it's a difficult run, and, you know, I'm happy to see more Power Pack, but I don't know if this is the real estate I would have wanted to see for them. So giving that two stars, and that is number 10. Moving on to number nine, which is Batman issue 146. So this issue continues the Joker and Batman interaction battle, I guess you'll call call it, or at least a mental battle. We get to see the makeshift Batman, the robot Batman. We get to see what I think the most interesting aspect is that the Bat family is trying to figure out, well, is this Batman? Is it not? And and I like those aspects, but it, it's there's still something about it that feels like hands length. There's something about it that's making Making me feel not connected to the book or excited about the book and I think it's really just the characters I think it's that we're focusing on the same plot over and over again so that's not really progressing and you're not getting those really rich character moments that you want to see in a Batman book especially when the Bat family is so involved uh, but the artwork is still solid for it I believe it is Jimenez who's uh yeah it's Jimenez who's doing the art so uh that's pretty solid but just not loving the story right now so giving that two and a half stars and that is number number nine Moving on to number eight, which is Birds of Prey, issue, what are we up to? Issue eight. A bit disappointing, because I'm excited about this arc. I like the idea of Batgirl being in danger, not being able to be in the limelight right now. And it's fun just to see these characters interact, but it takes a long time to kind of get to the root of the Batgirl issue. And, and I like the cliffhanger of the issue because you do see, oh, you know, something can happen to Batgirl, something can happen to Barbara. But the rest of them is them at a party dressing up and it, it just kind of felt like a filler issue out having those, again, rich character moments that you want from a filler issue. Artwork is okay. I still don't love the coloring for this book. So that also makes it a little harder to get into. So giving that two and a half stars and that is number eight. Moving on to number seven, which is X-Men issue 33. This one I felt like at least moved the pieces a little bit more. I like that we got to see, you know, the Sentinel thing kind of come to a head by the end of like, okay, what's going to happen to the X-Men? It feels like pawns are going into place to kind of have a bigger battle. And I like that we get to see, you know, your favorite X-Men throughout. You, you get a section with Kitty, you get a section with Emma, Wolverine, even Miss Marvel. So I thought this was a well-balanced issue with some solid art. Do... Does it make me a fan of the Krakoa age? No. Am I over the, the moon for this issue? No. But I do think this is a better balanced issue than some of the, the previous ones. So giving that three stars and that is number seven. Now we're getting to the main point of, of the of the video. So uh, the big book that came out or the big books that came out this week were Geiger, uh, Rook Exodus, and Red Code. So these are the new Ghost Machine books. I did not pick up Geiger because it's a volume two. I read issue one of Geiger. Was, I wasn't a fan of it. So I was like, all right, I'm going to pick up these two issues. And we're going to talk about if they were worth picking up. Is it getting me excited for Ghost Machine? Now we'll start with Rook Exodus issue one. So this is the one I thought was the lower one out of all of them, but I think it's for a very specific fan. It's a, and a specific fan of a genre. That's something I have actually really liked about Ghost Machine, because if you read the one shot, I remember I read the red coat section, I read the rook section, I'm like, oh, am I gonna really like this? I don't know. And then I read like Francis Manipul's story, I'm like, oh, that looks really fun. And then there was like a, another like family kind of Jetson style book. And I'm like, oh, that looks really fun. So the books I was looking forward to aren't these. They, they're other books, but that's what I like about Ghost Machine is that they're, they're kind of 
dealing with very different genres and, and jumping into that. Same thing for Rook Exodus. If you're a fan of post-apocalyptic storytelling, you'll like this. Also, everything feels very connected because it is. In the end of the book, there's like a timeline. So you get to see, oh, okay, so this is 1800s. This is 1700s. Uh, this is obviously the future. So I, I like that aspect. Did I personally feel connected to these characters? No, I, you know, this is not my genre. I don't, I don't normally like the post-apocalyptic future type storytelling. So, you know, it wasn't for me, but the artwork was really good. And I think it, it did do a really good job at world building. So I think if you like these type of stories, you're gonna fall in love with this. So not for me, but I think it is a well executed first issue, but out of all of them, this is the one I, I probably liked the least. And obviously Geiger, I, I didn't really try. So I, at least uh, for this volume, I, I didn't try. So I, I, I don't have an opinion on that. Next up, is Redcoat. So that's number five, I believe. So that's the one I enjoyed the most. The reason I like this the most is because it felt very different than any other comic we've we've had. So like it, with Rook, it's like, okay, I've seen a post-apocalyptic story, honestly, very similar to this before. Redcoat, I'm like, okay, you know, we in comics, you don't actually get to see this, this time period explored very often. There's kind of this uh, magic bend to the book. Obviously, the artwork is really well done. I think Brian Hitch's style works really well for this. But again, was I interested in this book? No, there wasn't really a hook for me personally. There wasn't a character where I was like, I really Really want to follow them but I feel like the world building once again was well done here you, you get to see okay what makes this unique why would I want to follow it if I'm interested in historical pieces so I'm gonna give this three stars out of all of these I, I don't think I'm gonna get issue two but I am very excited for the ghost machine titles I was already interested in because of the one shot which will hopefully be coming out soon so jumping into number four I was actually a little disappointed to see that this a little lower and the Spider-Man Shadow of the Goblin issue one I was expecting something a little different. You know, obviously you do get what you're asking for, which is who was the first Green Goblin. You get a little glimpse of, of this person. But in the beginning of the issue, they kind of stayed in a way where it's like, oh, this is kind of how I remember the story. So Spider-Man's telling. So it's almost out of continuity. It feels like, all right, at, at this point, it, it doesn't matter. You know, is it really going to play a bigger part? At the same time, this book is very much lining into the nostalgia book, so it's more of you wanted to revisit the 80s, revisit the 90s, this is what this is for. But at least it's doing something a little different than, oh, you remember this lost episode? We're gonna play here and not actually progress the story at all. This is a good way to do a nostalgia book without feeling it just spinning its wheels like I was talking about with Power Pack. You know, I like this issue uh, to a point. Again, I, I just enjoyed seeing, you know, the, the characters in a different state, right? It does have that very old school feeling, especially the sporting characters. You have uh, Gwen, you have Harry. Uh, and I, I like the ending, honestly. I, you know, I was reading through it, and I'm like, Do what, what is here? What is there to really want to read more? Like, I get it, this is the first Green Goblin, but is he really gonna play a part in any other issue? Probably not. But then you get to the end, you get to see Harry's mom. And I was like, oh, okay, you, you kind of got me there, because this is a character story that could really only be told here that can be interesting. Also, the artwork is really, really well done here. It's very detailed and still bending into, uh, a more modern look of what that style of artwork looked like. So I enjoyed that. It's a very wordy book. So that's something I, I didn't really love. I, you know, it's was, it was kind of dense uh, where I don't think it needed to be. But again, that's kind of how comics were back then too. So I think it's also still trying to play a part of this line that really Marvel should have like an imprint of because it is it, a whole new line for them. So I'm giving that three and a half stars. I probably will pick up issue two to see where this mom story goes. Moving on to number three, which is Ghost Lore issue nine. Another really solid issue. I'm just having a good time with it. It's really just these characters who was teaming up with Harmony. They all die and you're like, oh shit, that's kind of crazy. And then daughter and father meet up again and they kind of realized that maybe they should have been nicer to each other with some great art. I, I love I love the artist here, it's the same artist that did uh, ba a basket full of heads, which I loved. Uh, so if you like ghost stories, like horror, it's, it's a fun one. It's, it's a cool one to have on your list that is always a reliable read. So giving that three and a half stars and that is number three. 
Moving on to number two, really happy to see this so high, and that's Shazam issue 10. You know, this is a new creative team. We have beautiful artwork by Manuela Lupacino, I believe is how you pronounce her name. Just out of this world, really fun, cartoony art that fits very well for this. What I liked about this issue is the, the way it was able to balance family and superhero. I think it was just a really well-balanced issue where, you know, this is the writer who did Amazon's Attack, which I was very pleasantly surprised by. It's the same writer who did the Mary Marvel book, so obviously Mary has a, a big part in, in this issue as well. And I just had a good time with it. It's, it's just a reset of, okay, this is where the family's at. They're moving to a new home. How's this different now that they have a family that's together and it's not just the foster family? I, I thought it was a good start uh, to hopefully a really fun series. So giving that four stars and that is number two. Moving on to number one, I was really, really pleasantly surprised by this one, and that's Sensational She-Hulk, issue seven. You know, I was a little scared because it, it it seemed like I was skimming through it, and I was like, oh, really, it's just Jack, you know, is She-Hulk gonna be in it? But I, you know, I really liked how they dealt with the love triangle here, where we get to see a character that I didn't know about, and, and I think that's what Rainbow does so well, is have have continuity matter you know i was just talking about these nostalgia books where it's just like oh man well well it's a lost episode does it really matter to the grand scheme and then you read something like this and it does you know rainbow did a great job with that with runaways especially with the love the romance and in the love triangle where julie power you know she was kind of a oh uh, she's a obviously a, a bigger character but she was a one note character when it came to caroline's uh, carolina's um her romance so, you know they were together but it was kind of off panel so you didn't really have to reference it to to get Nico and her together uh but they're like no that happened on panel I want to talk about it and actually make a whole story out of it and this is the same thing here you probably could have forgotten about this character and it wouldn't have mattered but it's really cool to see it no this that story was told and I want to unravel that and it made it for a more interesting issue because it's not just okay here's the romance of She-Hulk and Jack of Hearts it's like no there's actually this barrier between them now and and you get to see a barrier that's not just their powers. It's actually a person that brings some really fun drama. And then the end, you, you see the, the bigger plot come together that her, the, the love interest's job has to do with killing She-Hulk. So you're like, okay, that's really fun. It blends superhero and romance really well. I love this art style too. It's fun to see a new setting. So I, I've been enjoying this arc a lot. So, and I've been enjoying this volume a lot. I think it's, you know, I just think it finally really found its voice and in, in its pacing as well. So giving that four stars and that is my pick of the week. Let me know in the comments below what were your favorite books. And last week's viewer pick of the week was a very obvious choice with Ultimate Spider-Man issue three. And here are some comments about that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. This is Comic Uno. Fair warning, next week I will not have an episode, but follow Comic Book Weekly because I, I will talk about that week's books on there. Uh, every Tuesday at 10 p.m. 10 p.m. Eastern Time, I do that comic book podcast, so check that out. And I'll be back the week after with my normal reviews. So hopefully you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.